Hello there. This is uh, part two of uh, unit three of the Harmony Level 9 course. And in the previous uh, video, um, I outlined some of the various general rules to follow. And a lot of the rules that were outlined in that video are actually going to be repeated things that we'll be speaking on as we travel through the Level 9 materials. So some of those are to use in four-part harmony to use contrary motion. So one voice is moving one way and other voices are moving the opposite way. To use common tones when possible, when there are two notes that are the same um, with between two chords, you can use those notes to help with create smooth voice leading. And also to avoid parallel fifths and octaves. Um, if you do those first two steps, contrary motion, common tones, then a lot of the time the parallel intervals will um, be non-existent or they won't become a problem. And as well to try to use stepwise motion as much as possible. Now I'm going to share my screen and continue with the next part of the lesson. So one thing that's very interesting is that you can have um, consecutive uh, intervals, uh, consecutive fifths and octaves, so you all, or parallel fifths and octaves that sometimes might not look like they're there. So there is something that is very handy, and I can just use this example um, as a way to outline this. This is actually on uh, page 30 of your book. You can see here that we have always, when we work, are working with four-part harmony, we have soprano, alto, tenor, and bass. And that is the case for every chord because everything is written in a vertical manner with each chord outlined with soprano, alto, tenor, and bass. So I always think up and down or vertical. Now, whenever you're writing your chord, you want to make sure that you double the notes appropriately and that also we check the intervals between each of the groupings of, um, of voices. So what we can do is say that you can check the interval between soprano and alto. It's always good to check the interval between alto and tenor. It's also good to check the interval between soprano and tenor and it's good to check the interval between soprano and bass. It's good to check the interval between tenor and bass. And it's um, also then good to, to do that for each chord. So basically what we're doing is we're looking at the intervals between each of the chords to make sure that the spacing is correct um, and also the notes are correct. We put in the correct number of notes in the right spot. But then you want to make sure that for each of these outlined different color-coded um, parts to this, this diagram here, you want to then make to check the intervals between one chord to another in the same way. So for example, if you wanted to check the interval between the soprano and alto, or sorry, soprano and tenor here, you would do that between the first chord and the next chord. Um, and then you want to do the same thing for each of them. So here we have from B to G, which is a sixth. And here we have from C to C, which is an octave. So since those intervals are different, that's good. Um, the next uh, one we could check is, um, let's, let's check the um, alto to bass. So we go from, sorry, alto to, te to tenor. So we go from here to here, B to D is a third, C to G is a fifth. So that's fine too. And also there's a, a nice voice leading from, there's a bit of a jump here, but that's all fine. Now what we can do is go to the next one. So let's um, go to the soprano and bass. So we'll check those intervals. Now here we have an octave, G to G, and an octave, C to C. So there, that's an error because we have a parallel interval from the G to the G going to the next chord from the C to the C. 
soprano to bass. Now what we can do is check, let, let's check these tenor to bass. So we'll uh, switch the color here and whoops, go from a third to an octave. B to G is a third, C to C is an octave. And so now you can see, oh, and we also want to um, do the last one, which is soprano to alto, fourth to fourth, D to G is a fourth, G to C is a fourth. So you can see how there were a couple of errors. There, were, there was a parallel fifth and a parallel octave. So um, sometimes when, when we're, we're writing chords, we want to make sure that the, um, the voice leading is clear. And sometimes when you see that there's an error, um, there might be a parallel fifth or a parallel octave somewhere, then the good thing to do would be to edit the specific notes that are um, the culprits <laughs> or the ones that are having the trouble. Um, and then you might want to change around the... the um, intervals a little bit so that the parallel octaves um, don't exist. That in itself is a very important skill. That way we'll be, we'll be developing over time. Um, two of the chords that this will um, come up with in, in the most is between the four and five chords because the four chord and the five chord do not contain the same notes. If we're in the key of C major, for example, this, the F major chord is the fourth chord in the key of C, F, A, C. The five chord is G, B, D. So you can, have, you can see how you can have a parallel fifth between F to C and G to D. You can also have a parallel octave between F to F and G to G. So because there are um, d very different notes between both chords, that is one chord progression that you always want to keep track of um, to make sure that there are no parallel intervals there. Another aspect that is very interesting is voice overlapping. And that is where one voice is lower, has a lower note than the highest note of the next voice. So for example, here there's a voice overlap in the... Um, tenor and bass at the top of page 31 because this tenor note, which is a B natural, is one semitone lower than the highest bass note in the next chord. So that would be considered an error. So what you always want to do is you want to make sure that um, everything is blocked nicely. And even if there is movement where you have to go up like this, that the bass follows, so that the bass note is always the lowest note of each chord. And the other voices can move around as well, but you never want to have it where the tenor um, or bass get inter interchanged. And the same thing um, with any of the other voices. You can have voice overlap between the tenor and the alto, and also between the alto and the soprano. So I hope this uh, part two is helpful. Uh, the topics we spoke on today were parallel intervals, how to spot them, and also voice overlapping with um, writing four-part harmony. Look forward to seeing you next time.